Hello everyone. Today I will be going over the entire Audient driver software, which you can already update to a beta driver, which will soon be released as the newest drivers for your Evo or ID interfaces and is 100% accessible. And even more than that, it contains spoken feedback for various events like clipping or turning hardware knobs. I will be going over the various views of the ID software and show you the most important functionalities and keystrokes you need to remember in order to use the software. Because I don't own an Evo interface and the ID and the Evo software are a bit different. I am collaborating with Scott Chesworth, who will be chiming in and having his own little demonstration at the end of this video, where he goes over some differences between the Evo and the ID software and interfaces. This is something that especially Scott has been working on for quite a while now. So let's not wait any longer and get started. Okay, so the usual entry point is the context menu. You will almost all the time start with the software loaded because it auto starts when booting your system and it will create an entry within the tray, at least under Windows. And what you need to do here is press the context menu key while selecting it within the system tray. ID button. Let's press context menu ID window. and we will see that it's already accessible. Show mixer. About ID. Visit ID knowledge base. Register product. Check for updates. Set ACO buffer size collapsed. Set sample rate collapsed. Set clock source collapsed. Set loopback source collapsed. Quit. So here you can already see that you have some quick access options. You can, for example, set loopback source collapsed. Set your loopback source really easily without going through the entire UI. You can just flip that open, right arrow. ID window, door 1 plus 2, door 3 plus 4, door 5 plus 6, master mix, pure checked. QB, door one plus two. So what you can see here, you can easily and quickly change your loopback source. And you will get feedback on which loopback source is currently selected via the QB, QB checked. checked indicator. This goes for all the checkboxes within the UI. ID window, set loopback source collapsed. You can also change your sample rate and whichever else was actually mentioned here within the context menu. So this is a quick access option. But the most important thing is Obviously, the Quit. show mixer show mixer option, which we are going to click now and see what happens. ID window unknown. We are currently in the main view of the application, which is the mixer view. Here we can control which channel gets mixed into which output. One, if not the most important thing that you need to remember here is that control plus tab allows you to change through the channel strips much quicker. So tab will navigate you step by step through all the different settings for each channel strip. But if you quickly want to change between the channel strips without having to tap six to 10 times for each channel strip, control plus tab will allow you to do that much quicker. So let's go through the first channel strip and show you which control to have. And afterwards we can skip through the others real quick. Let's tap once. Mid one edit, mid one red only toggle is object to change labeling. This is the mic one label. This is obviously, as he says, toggle this object to change labeling. So you can actually click that with NVDA enter and we turn into an edit box, which you can actually label right now. And by default, it's labeled as mic one because it's microphone one input on my ID interface. But you can obviously change labeling if you wanted to give it a more precise name here. Let's tap once more. 10 dB toggle button off not pressed. This is the 10 dB toggle. Toggle it on and you will get a 10 dB boost to your microphone signal. Mid one polarity off toggle button off not pressed. Obviously a polarity toggle, right? Slider 0 0.5 mid one pan slider. This is the pan slider. Right now it's panned to the middle. Press toggle button off not pressed mid one solo button off. The solo button. Toggle this and your microphone signal will be soloed, obviously. M toggle button off not pressed mid one mute button off. The total opposite, the mute button. Checkbox not check red only mid one clipping indicator off. This is the clipping indicator. This looks like a checkbox, but you cannot actually check this, but it will get checked automatically if your signal clips. And while your audience driver software is open, you will also get speech feedback via SAPI. Let's tap once more. Slider minus 128 mid one channel fader. 
this is the channel fader. And right now it's basically set to minus infinity. So it's off. I won't hear anything. Nothing is routed to my master mix. Cause currently my master mix is selected. We will get into the section where I can control which mix is selected in a second. Mix to edit, mix to red only toggle this object to change labeling. So we are now at mic two. As soon as we start tabbing here, we will get the same controls that we had with mic one here. Both of those are basically gathered in one channel strip control arrangement. Let's do that real quick. 10 dB toggle button off but pressed. Mic two polarity off toggle button off but pressed. Slider 0 0.5 mic two pan slider. S toggle button off but press mic two solo button off. M toggle button off but press mic two mute button off. Checkbox not check red only mic two clipping indicator off. Slider minus 128 mic two channel fader. Here we go. So what comes next? Mono button, mono button. Mic one and mic two are in mono mode. Toggle this button to join them in stereo mode. That is kind of interesting because the channel strip is basically over. We can control that our microphones as they are right now are configured in mono mode, but we can also check this and toggle them into stereo mode, which is kind of useful if you're using them, for example, not as microphone inputs, but as line inputs, you can combine them into one stereo pair of inputs instead of having two mono channel inputs here. Door one plus two edit, door one plus two red only toggle this object to change labeling. Here we go. This marks the end of the mic channel strip. Now we are at the door one plus two channel strip, which is the first pair of software inputs of the ID14 Mark II, which I'm using right now. Most of the options within this channel strip are identical to the mic options, but there are some differences here and we'll just quickly go through the differences. Slider zero, door one, pan slider. Here we've got the pan, which looks a bit different. Slider one, door two, pan slider. Cause we've got two of them and one is set to zero and the other was set to one, which is basically still just the middle. So we have pan the one exactly to the left, the other exactly to the right, because those are combined as a stereo pair. So we have basically a typical stereo pair of inputs here. Solo toggle button off not press door one plus two solo button off. Mute toggle button off not press door one plus two mute button off. Checkbox not check red only door one clipping indicator off. Checkbox not check red only door two clipping indicator off. Slider zero door two channel fader. We've got the channel fader and this is set to zero. So it's basically at zero dB. It's fully faded in and I will get my door one plus two output routed to the main mix. Stereo button, stereo button. Door one and door two are joined in stereo mode. Toggle this button to split them in mono mode. And as you can see here, both of them are linked in stereo mode. Door 3 plus 4 edit, door 3 plus 4 red only toggle this object to change labeling. And the next one is the door 3 plus 4 and it looks exactly identical. So we can skip this and skip directly to door 5 plus 6 by pressing control tab. Door 5, door 6 container, door 5 edit, door 5 red only toggle this object to change labeling. And because door 5 plus 6 looks totally identical again, we can skip that and press control tab again. Master section, button toggle this button to switch to master mix. This is the master section, and this is really important because it controls which mix of you you currently see while tabbing through this window. Right now, and this is actually not shown, we've got the master view shown because I click this toggle here, toggle this button to switch to master mix. I toggled this button and it changed the entire view to the master mix. So everything I change in here will change the mixing that goes to my master mix output. Let's tap a few times and see what else we've got here. Master mix edit, master mix red only, toggle this object to change master mix labeling. Again, we can relabel everything we want. Checkbox not check red only, master mix left clipping indicator off. We obviously get clippings for the mixes as well. Checkbox not check red only, master mix right clipping indicator off. Button toggle this button to switch to cure. And this is again the next mix. So we can toggle this and as soon as we do that, we will get the mixing controls for the QA mix. So if we now, for example, target this and went over to my microphone or to my door one and two, the input fader would be different than on my master mix because I want my microphone to go to my QA mix and it will be sitting at minus 6 dB, for example, but I don't want my microphone to go to my master mix, hence why it's sitting at minus 128 dB. So whenever you want to change a specific submix, master, QA, or QB in this case, you will have to toggle one of those buttons first. All the other options are identical. Let's tap through real quick. Cure edit, cure red only, toggle this object to change cure labeling. S toggle button off, not press cure unsoloed. 
Button toggle is button to switch to QB. QB edit QB red only toggle is object to change QB labeling. S toggle button off not press QB on solo. We can solo various mixes here, but that's all that's been added to those mixer controls. Mix channels not visible toggle button on press mix channels visible. This is the so-called monitoring section, and it allows you to quickly show and hide various channel strips at once within the UI. If you think that you will never touch your microphone positions again, then you can toggle this mic channels not visible toggle off, which will then hide the mics. And whenever you control tap through the window or tap through the window, you won't get any mics shown. I've intentionally hidden some controls in here. Let's tap through and see which ones. Off toggle button off not press digital channels not visible. There we go. I've hidden the optical channels. I disabled this checkbox and thus the optical channels won't show up within the mixer view unless I check this checkbox again and they will show up. Door channels not visible. Toggle button on crystal channels visible. I can intentionally hide the door channels. Slider minus 10 big knob. This is the big knob as it's called. It's the global volume control that you also get if you're turning the huge encoder dial on the interface itself. So it's the global volume control. Dim button. That's the dim button, which will dim your volume by the amount that is configured within another screen that I will be showing you in just a second. Alt button. The alternative speaker, quick switch. TB button. The talk back, quick switch, which enables talk back functionalities. Polarity button button. The polarity button. Mono button. The mono button to quickly sum all your signals up to mono instead of stereo. Button. Button. Unknown and some buttons which are unlabeled and not doing much. And that's it for this view. One important thing to notice here, we've got a menu strip, but due to accessibility reasons with the juice framework that the audio driver is using, we cannot exit it via Alt key alone, which would be the typical behavior under Windows, right? Pressing Alt doesn't do anything. So it's quite important to know that you can access them by pressing Alt and the first letter of the menu strip name, for example, Alt F. And as soon as you are within the menu strip, you can quickly navigate through with the left and right arrows and the up and down arrows as usual. Let's, for example, press Alt F and show you the menus real quick. ID window, open. Open will allow you to quickly open your presets. You can save whichever configuration you've currently set up within your mixer as preset, and open will allow you to quickly just reload your presets and thus quickly switch between your different presets that you've saved. Save. Save, we allow to save your presets respectively. Close. Close, we just close this window. Quit. Quit, we just quit it entirely. Open. So that's all for the file menu. Let's press the right arrow ones. ID window. Show analog inputs checked. This is basically a quick access to the monitoring section. We've got show analog inputs show digital inputs show digital inputs which is disabled as i've disabled it within the monitoring section show door returns checked show door returns obviously checked show system panel and system panel is the different panel the panel that is totally different to the evo drivers which i'll be going through in just a second show analog inputs checked that's all for the view let's go to the setup menu press right arrow id window set aco buffer size collapsed here we've got Set AC buffer size once again. Set sample rate collapsed. Sample rate. Set clock source collapsed. Clock source. Set loop back source collapsed. Loop back source. Set ACO buffer size collapsed. So these are the four options that we also got within the ID context menu. There is another menu. It's just not reachable by pressing right arrow out of the sub menus here. So we have to go left arrow from the file menu, which will get us to the ID window. Help menu. Visit ID knowledge base. Check for updates. About ID. Visit ID knowledge base. And these three options, check for updates, will allow you to update your drivers and your firmware on your interface, which is totally accessible as well. So that might be important. Well, on the last UI element that we have to go through is the system panel, which is an ID specific panel, which is not available within the Evo drivers as far as I know. Let's quickly go through this. I, ID, ID window. First of all, we have to find it. Set loop back source collapsed. ID window. Show system panel. Show system panel. Let's check that. System panel window. Checkbox not check red only digital input one. But that system panel window. Checkbox not check red only digital input one. But that. And here we would get some totally different options. Let's tap a few times and see if we can make up what this is actually doing here. Checkbox check red only digital input one. SPDIF. 
Yeah. So here you can control if your optical input will be an aided input or an SPDIF input. It's currently set to SPDIF in my case, because that's what I'm using it for. Checkbox check red only preferred clock source internal. You can control the clock source, which is basically exactly the same that you could also control within the setup menu or the ID context menu of the overall system tray icon. Checkbox not check red only preferred clock source digital input one. Right, we've got internal or external clock source. Radio button not check mono mode left. The radio button allows us to control the mono configuration that we had within our main panel. We had the mono button there, and right now it is set to center, so it will sum both channels up. But we can control behavior here, and if we don't want it to actually sum up our source, but only, for example, play the left channel or the right channel, we can control that here. Radio button check mono mode center. It's set to center right now. Radio button not check mono mode right. But you could also control it that whenever you hit the mono button, it would just play the right or the left channel respectively. Scroll control combo box scroll control collapsed. The scroll control will allow you to change what happens if you have the third knob on the ID interface pressed and dial the encoder knob. Right now it's set to scroll control, so it will scroll the mouse wheel whenever you turn the dial. Slider minus 15 dim level slider. This is the dim level, so if you hit the dim button within the main UI, this is the amount of decibels that will get reduced whenever the dim functionality is enabled. Slider zero all trim slider. This is the alt trim, which is set to zero right now. That controls what happens if you hit the alt or the trim buttons. Analog outputs, selected toggle button on quest. The analog outputs is basically a toggle which controls which options are currently shown on this screen. It's important to know that you cannot quickly go through this window yet by pressing control tab. You always need to tap through, but this window isn't as complex and large as the other one. So this is not a huge game breaker. Right now, the analog output options are shown, and we will go through what this means and what they do right now. Let's tap a few times. Talk back toggle button off not pressed. The talkback toggle is the other option that we have, and we will go through the options that pop up as soon as we toggle that on after going through the analog output options. One plus two stereo button. So this is the one plus two stereo button. So we control that our first analog output pair is linked in stereo mode. Checkbox check red only outputs one plus two routing domain mix. We can control where our main out, our analog output one and two, actually linked to. Right now it's linked to the main mix. Checkbox not check red only outputs one plus two routing to alt SPK. We could also route them to our alternative speaker outputs. Checkbox not check red only outputs one plus two routing to QA. Or to QA. Checkbox not check red only outputs one plus two routing to QB. Or to QB, obviously. Checkbox not check red only outputs one plus two routing to door through. We could also link them to door through which is a feature that allows us to send audio via our DAW directly to the channels without doing pre-processing. So no volume control whatsoever. We could cause some serious clipping issues with that, but this is the lowest latency that could, we could ever get when feeding something out of our DAW directly. Three plus four stereo button. We've also got the other outputs linked in a stereo pair. Checkbox not check red only outputs three plus four routing domain mix. This is not routed to my main mix. Checkbox not check red only outputs three plus four routing to alt SPK. Not to my alt speakers. Checkbox check red only outputs three plus four routing to QA. But to my QA mix. There we go. And all the other options are identical, right? Checkbox not check red only outputs three plus four routing to QB. Checkbox not check red only outputs three plus four routing to door through. Here we go. Let's tap once more. Checkbox check red only outputs five plus six routing to main mix. Uh huh. Five and six are routed to main mix as well. Checkbox check check checkbox not check red only outputs five plus six routing to door through. Checkbox not check red only digital input one. But that. And now we are back at the beginning of the screen. We've got the optical input control once again. Checkbox check red only digital input one. SP diff. Now what happens if we toggle from analog output to talk back here? Let's tap a few times and see what it does. Check, check, radio, radio, radio scroll, slider minus, sliders, analog output, talk back, toggle button off, not pressed. Let's press that. NVDA enter. It's always important that a usual enter or space toggle won't work. We always should press NVDA enter or whichever other interaction method you will have with draws or whichever screen reader you're using. Invoke on, checkbox, check, red only, talk back, source type, internal. Here we can control our talkback source type. Right now it's internal, so we can use whichever input on our interface we want. Right now it's set to internal, so we can choose either our microphone inputs or one of our door channels probably. Checkbox not check red only talkback source type. 
external. We could also change that to external, which would allow us to change whichever input device is available on our system. So we could use our headset microphone, for example, instead. None combo box, none collapse, select the talkback input source. It's a combo box, it's set to none right now. Let's see which options we have. Mid one. Mid two. Two. DD one. Digital inputs one. DD two. Two. And that's it. Cause it's set to SPDIF. We only have two digital inputs, stereo, left, right, right. So we will set it back to none. D mid, mid none. And tap once more. Checkbox not check red only digital input one, but that. That's it, right? If we set it to external. None. Checkbox not check red only talkback source type. Invoke. We can tap once more. Windows audio combo box windows audio collapsed. And we can control which audio driver we want to use, which is Windows audio by default. Windows Audio Exclusive Mode. Exclusive Mode. Windows Audio Low Latency Mode. Low Latency Mode. Direct Sound. Direct Sound. ACO. ACO. And that's it. So let's set it back to Windows Audio. Windows Audio. And after selecting the driver, the next control will be the device that we want to be using. Microphone. Cisco Webex Desk Camera. Combo Box Microphone. Cisco Webex Desk Camera. Collapsed. Yeah, this is Microphone. Cisco Webex Desk Camera, which is my webcam. So we've got all the input devices that are available on our system right now in this combo box, but I don't want to be using TalkBack right now, so I will set it back to internal. Check, check box, not check, re invoke. And now, it's set to none again, which is exactly what I want. And we close this window down with Alt F4. ID window unknown. Right then, over to London for a bit. I'm gonna show you some differences with the Evo control software. We're going to take a quick look at the clipping feature that speaks, and then I'm going to show you how the smart gain feature can be used accessibly, which as someone that records myself a lot, I find to be super useful. So first of all, let's go into the Evo software. I'm going to get there the same way Tony did. The only difference being I've got an Evo button in my system tray, whereas Tony had an ID button. If you're doing this on Mac, you don't have a system tray, obviously, but your Evo or ID icon will live in the menu extras section. So voice over M twice to get there. Desktop list, user promoted notification Evo button. Context menu. Evo window, show mixer. Show mixer. Desktop list, Reaper, X64, 12 or 40. And on my machine, it doesn't get focus automatically for some strange reason. I have to alt tab to it. Unsaved Ops 20 Evo, Evo window. And now we're in the window. I can start tabbing through controls. Mid one edit, mid one red only toggle is object to change labeling. Okay, so these are grouped a little bit differently than in the ID software with the Evo 8 interface that I've got here, which is their mid sized interface, four ins, four outs. The control tab keystroke moves us through pairs. Mic one, mic two container. So we've got mic one and mic two grouped. Mic three plus four container. Mics three and four grouped. PC one plus two container. PC one and two. PC three plus four container. PC three and four. And then loopback one plus two container. That's where you can configure your loopback stuff, which is super useful for streaming. And finally, the master section. Master section. Button toggle is button to switch to outputs one plus two. And much like with the ID software that Tony showed you, the master section is where you can also configure which types of channels are visible. So if you never use some of this stuff, you can hide it and keep the clutter out of the way. The menu system for the control software when you're running an Evo interface is really similar. Uh, there's a few less options overall because the Evos are a bit simpler than the ID interfaces. And there's one really important one that I want to show you if you need to configure an artist mix for your second headphone output. So if I do Alt-S for the setup top menu, Evo window. and in here you'll recognize some of these options. Tony's already showed you them. Set ACO buffer size collapsed. Seen it. Set sample rate collapsed. Seen it. Input routing collapsed. Seen it. Enable artist mix. Aha. Artist mix. This is unchecked at the moment because I'm not using my second headphone output today. But if I did want to configure an artist mix, I'd check this. And then I could navigate around and choose what I want to send to the second set of headphones that the person I'm recording would be wearing. I'm going to hit escape to come out of here. And let's take a quick look at the clipping notifications that you get with speech. So these only speak if the audience control panel is open. Uh, now it doesn't need to be visible, it doesn't need to be in focus, but it does need to be open in the background, or it will speak when it's visible. So if I just clip this mic deliberately, mind your ears, I'm going to tap the mic after three, one, two, three. 
Mic 2 is clipping. Okay, so you heard it say Mic 2 is clipping, right? And now if I tab to the clip indicator... Evo checkbox check red only Mic 2 clipping indicator on. There you go. Mic 2 clipping indicator is on and the checkbox is checked. If I hit enter on this, don't get any speech notification that it's changed, unfortunately. But if I give shift tab and tab a little wiggle... M checkbox not checked red only Mic 2 clipping indicator off. Now it's reset itself when I hit enter on it. And just to show you that this also works in the background, if I minimize... Desktop list, Reaper, X64. So I'm on my desktop now. But the Evo software is still open in the background. I'm going to clip the mic again. One, two, three. Mic 2 is clipping. There you go. I could be doing something else. I could be on a stream or doing whatever. As long as that software is open in the background, I get told when I'm clipping. I'm just going to Alt-Tab back to that and reset the clip indicator. Evo. Evo window. And tabbing to find the control. But we find a little quirk. At the time of recording, when you switch back into the software, if the clip indicators have changed, your tab key won't move. But there's an easy workaround that will get focus behaving again. If you just use NVDA object navigation or JAWS touch cursor, interact with the Evo window, System collapsed space. and then bang away on next object a couple of times until you get into the channel strip controls. File, view, setup, help. There's the menus. Mid one edit, mid one red only toggle this object to change labeling. Root your keyboard focus there. Move focus, mid one edit, mid one red only. And now our keyboard focus is back where it should be and I can tab to this clip indicator cater for mic 2 and clear it. Slice dot m dot checkbox slider mic 1 mic 1 mic 2 slider z toggle m dot checkbox check red only mic 2 clipping indicator on. Enter and that's reset. All right I think that's all I wanted to show you for the Evo software it's pretty much the same. I'm just going to do all f4 to close this. Unsaved project reaper v6.71 registered. And I've landed back in reaper. Now one of the key differences with the Evo interfaces is that Unlike the ID interface that Tony's got, there's no analog controls. Everything is digital. And at first, that might seem to be less accessible, but in combination with this spoken feedback, well, it still might not be for everyone, but I've found it to be plenty workable here. Let's just take a look at what type of feedback you get at the time of recording. If I was to press the input one button, for example, and then press phantom power, Mid one phantom on. Aha, I get told Phantom is now on and which input it's been enabled for. I actually don't want that on because I'm going to record a guitar on input one in a second. So I'm going to turn that off again. Mid one Phantom off. And there's a couple of other handy things we can use these digital selector buttons for, most of which you don't get speech feedback for at the time of recording, but Audient are looking at adding that. The two I use most often is if you hold down any of the input selector or output selector buttons for half a second or so, it mutes the channel that you've held down. And it's the same deal to unmute it, hold it down for half a second or so. It's a toggle. Now you do get speech already when you're muting outputs but you don't at the moment for inputs. So if you're a streamer and you're going to be muting yourself on the fly, make sure that you're also monitoring yourself so you can tell when you are passing signal. Otherwise, you might find yourself talking to nobody. You'd feel a bit like Tony on Twitch. Burn. And the last thing to tell you is that as well as linking channels, if you want to record a stereo source in the software, you can also do that on the fly. For example, here I have inputs three and four linked at the moment. And I did that on the interface itself by tapping the buttons for input three and input four at the same time. It's another thing that you don't get speech feedback for on the fly yet, but it is reflected in the software. So you can always open up the control panel and check whether your inputs are linked or not, if you're not sure. To unlink them from the interface, same deal. Just tap the input buttons that you want to unlink together. All right, I'm going to record a little bit of electric guitar. By the modern magic of editing, I've got an electric guitar plugged in here. And there's no signal going to Reaper at the moment. And I've got a guitar track ready to go. Down arrow to that. Guitar. And I'm going to arm it. Let's see what our gain setting is like at the moment. Arm. An arm. Holy moly. Okay, so the gain is way too high. You're getting all the noise and interference and all that kind of stuff from my guitar. On the interface that I've got, input one is also the instrument input. So there's a couple of ways I can fix that problem. I can tap the input one button and then change the gain. Let's see what that would sound like. So sorry about the noise. Going to arm this again. Arm. Tap input one, turn the big knob down on the top of the interface. Mid one gain eight, mid one gain six, mid one gain five, mid one gain and four, mid one gain three, mid one gain two, 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 mid one gain two
noise starts to disappear, and we get speech feedback as well. Unarmed. But, as you just heard, it's quite a lot of speech feedback. Really useful for fine tuning the gain, but if you need to make big gain adjustments, especially if you're trying to record yourself, it's much easier to just play your instrument and let the interface do it for you. So let's just take a run through how that works. The smart gain feature is controlled entirely with button presses on the interface and you get a good amount of speech feedback from it already. So to use it, you press the smart gain button. Smart gain setup. That takes us into smart gain setup. You press the input that you want to measure or if you want to measure a pair of inputs, press those buttons at the same time. I'm just going to press input one and then I'm going to press smart gain again to start it measuring and I'm going to play my guitar. Now, when smart gain is actually measuring, you won't hear anything, even if you've got record monitor turned on in Reaper. You only hear the signal after it's been measured, basically to protect your listening gear from hideously loud noises. Arm. All right, so pressing smart gain. Smart gain running. It's measuring, play a little riff -ski. Hey presto, I think the guitar drowned out NVDA, but it just said smart gain successful, smart gain stopped. And now if you listen, even though this track is armed, well, there's a tiny little bit of crackle and pop, basically because my guitar is cheap and nasty and so are the electronics in my flat. But it's a much cleaner signal than it was before. So I could get a recording of this riff and it would sound like this. <laughs> So there you go, I'm going to unarm this track because we finished with it. Unarmed. And there's just one more thing to show you about Smart Gain. If you start it going but then change your mind midway through, I'm going to press Smart Gain again. Smart Gain setup. Input one again. Let's start it going. Smart Gain running. Now let's say you're recording a vocalist that does a massive sneeze at this point and you don't want to measure that. You can just press any of the output buttons. Smart Gain stopped. And Smart Gain stops. And I think that about wraps my bit up for now. I'm sure I've missed something, but uh, if I didn't touch on anything that you wanted to know about, hit me up in the comments. Cheers. And that is all there is to say about the Audient driver software. It's kind of complicated and easy at the same time. You have to remember how the mixing and routing goes, which is something that you need to get used to. But other than that, it's 100% accessible. It's going to get better in the future. We've got some plans already. And especially the spoken feedback whenever something's clipping on your system is really, really useful. And I've been told that this is even better with Evo interfaces than it is with the ID interfaces, which don't have spoken feedback for all the hardware controls yet. But this might improve in the future as well. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for Scott for correcting me and elaborating on whichever details I've missed and thanks for the hard work of communicating with audience, motivating them to improve on their accessibility. Thanks for all the other work you've done within the Reaper Access WhatsApp group, the Reapers Without Peepers mailing list, and all the other various things that I've probably missed so far. But thank you a lot for everything. For all the watchers, if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and if you've got any questions to Scott or to me, then write a comment within the comment section below the video and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye bye.